Hi, and welcome to today's Biznology Digital Marketing Webinar. I'm Mike Moran, founder of Biznology and senior strategist at Conversion Revealed Context and Solo Segment. I'm the co-author of Search Engine Marketing, Inc., and Outside In Marketing, and sole author of Do It Wrong Quickly. I'm a veteran of IBM managing groups in IBM.com for eight years and retiring from IBM in 2008 as a distinguished engineer. Today you'll be hearing from Christina Jaramillo who will present how to go beyond brand awareness and actually drive revenues using LinkedIn. But before we start, we need to recognize our sponsors. Barn Razors, a full service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Corp, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. InHelp.com, a LinkedIn marketing firm that understands that social media reach without engagement that leads to revenue means nothing. Mountaintop Data, a B2B marketing intelligence company providing marketing lists as well as data cleaning, data appending, and data maintenance services. As we wait for more attendees to join, let me review the format of our webinar. Our Biznology webinars last just 30 minutes, so you can easily fit them into your busy schedule. We record each webinar and we'll email you that link later this week. During our speaker's presentation, you can use GoToWebinar to ask a question. That orange arrow opens and closes your controls. If you have a question, simply type it into the box labeled Questions at any time during the event and press the Send button. I'll select a few questions at the end of our webinar and pose them to Christina. In the handout section of your control panel, you can find a PDF of today's presentation. Today we'll be using the Twitter hashtag BizNoWebinar in case you'd like to share information during the webinar. While we're waiting for our last few attendees to join, I'd like to remind you that the Biznology monthly newsletter and daily articles are available for free at biznology.com. So if you're not already a subscriber, we hope you'll sign up now. Thanks again to all of you for spending 30 minutes with us. We know how valuable your time is, so let's introduce today's speaker. Christina Jaramillo is a New York Times recognized social media expert. Using her unique LinkedIn lead to revenue marketing approach since 2011, LinkedIn marketing expert Christina Jaramillo has been helping sales and marketing leaders at Fortune 1000 organizations, small to medium sized enterprises, and professional services firms get more marketing qualified leads and revenue opportunities using LinkedIn. Christina's accomplishments include turning the profiles of hundreds of business leaders around the globe into sales and marketing tools that communicate real business value to prospects. Being recognized by LinkedIn and being featured in their sophisticated marketer's guide to LinkedIn. Getting published on top websites like Forbes.com. Giving clients more sales opportunities than all other initiatives combined. You can learn more about Christina, her firm GetLinkedInHelp.com and the results her clients are achieving at, wait for it, getlinkedinhelp.com. So if you've ever struggled with getting leads through LinkedIn, this is the webinar for you. Christina, take it away. Thanks so much, Mike, for that introduction. So the reason that we're having this webinar today is because studies show that 87% of B2B sales and marketing leaders are using social media platforms, in particular LinkedIn, but less than one in five can clearly prove a social media ROI. So just so that I can clarify this, and you heard me right, it's less than one in five can clearly prove a social media ROI. And that's a problem because as I stated on my website and as Mike mentioned, social media reach without engagement that leads to revenue means nothing. So you can have all the brand awareness in the world that you want, but what good is it going to do for you if the company, uh, do for you and your company if the efforts aren't being reflected in your bottom line? Yet very, many sales and marketing professionals are stuck at this brand awareness stage. I conducted a recent study through my company and we, it showed how sales and marketing leaders are stuck at the brand awareness stage. Let's look at what most of those people chose over leads and next step actions and revenue as things that they were tracking as most important. So the, the things that people were tracking were number of profile views and content platform views, how many people they were reaching with their content or messages, number of likes, comments, and shares, number of connections, and group numbers. 
Now, these are state metrics that they picked over next step actions beyond the click, click, like, and share, marketing qualified leads, sales opportunities, and revenue. Now, don't get me wrong, all those things that they were tracking are important, but they picked those metrics over metrics that we think are more important, like next step actions, revenue, and marketing qualified sales opportunities. Now, let's look at the difference between the people that received little and no leads and those that were regularly driving leads and demand. Sales and marketing must be doing something wrong. They're focused on, those that were focused on revenue were the ones that were building and leveraging relationships all the way to the end. So they were the ones that were regularly driving demand and sales opportunities and revenues. Even CMOs at top organizations like Xerox, Wiley, Lithium, Exojet, and G2 Crowd are getting LinkedIn wrong because they're taking the wrong approach. They're stuck again at that brand awareness phase. And in a recent Marketing Land article, the Xerox CMO, John Kennedy, mentioned they're using LinkedIn to push content to their followers. And they're doing this through their company page updates and their sponsored updates. And that he, um, Xerox, is supplying their audience with ebooks, slides, share presentations, and blog articles that offer advice on how to work better. And he even stated, I'm quoting him here, hopefully we'll provide useful resources that can help those who follow us perform better and as a result engender interest in the Xerox brand along the way. Now when I read something like that, I see that that's a lot of hopefuls because he's hopefully the prospects will find and read this content that Xerox is producing. Hopefully they're going to find it useful and hopefully the content that they read, we're going to generate some interest in Xerox um, brand in the process. So that was three hopefuls right there. And the reason that he, uh, John was using this word, hopefully, was because he can't directly tie these LinkedIn actions to sales opportunities or revenue. And because they're just focused on reach and getting brand awareness, there's no predictive marketing. But when you focus on the complete funnel and pay strict attention to the next step actions prospects are taking as you build the relationship, you can put a process in place that you know will lead to revenue. Now, no, most marketers are really familiar and understand the concept of pipeline marketing, but for some reason we seem to not use that particular method on LinkedIn and in social media. We're thinking of filling the pipeline to turn them into a lead and what our cost per lead is, but we're not thinking about how we're going to turn those leads into marketing qualified leads and then into sales qualified leads and eventually opportunities and closed deals. For example, Wiley CMO is focused on sponsored updates and sponsored in-mails. Now, they had an unusually high click-through rate and opt-in rate, but the CMO never talked about the sales conversion rate. Forrester says that about 99% of leads do not convert, and LinkedIn says from their own research that 87% of leads do not convert. So if leads do not convert, it doesn't matter what your cost per lead may be, your cost of business growth is still going to be high. Now, Lithium was using LinkedIn to fill the funnel and then letting their marketing automation programs take over. Their CMO didn't think about those buyers that were resistant to sales and marketing messages um, that were maybe being provided to them too early. They didn't think about the buyers that wanted to have that relationship based on value before they made a decision to move forward. So what about those B2B buyers who are looking for vendors who can turn their vision into a clear path to value? You can only do that if you take the time to build a real relationship of tr instead of treating people or prospects as a lead, which is exactly what you're doing when you let your marketing automation take over. And as you can see from the screen, B2B buyers are using LinkedIn at every stage of their decision-making process. By just focusing on the top of the funnel and then letting marketing automation take over, Lithium is missing out on a lot of sales opportunities. Now, Exojet's marketing efforts are concentrated on their company page, which again is top of funnel their CMO is failing to understand that LinkedIn is not about engaging with brands. B2B buyers on LinkedIn are looking for access to broad networks that can help them, not brands, but actual visible experts. And they want relevant context to connect with those vendors. And G2 Crowd CMO stated that they're using their LinkedIn company page as an extension to their website. And a lot of companies are. On their company page, they're sharing relevant content with their following audiences. These companies are taking the first step to building long-term value using LinkedIn. They're building a following and establishing their brand as an expert resource with the content that they're sharing on their LinkedIn company page. But building long-term value that leads to ROI and revenue requires further educating your prospects via a nurturing flow and real relationship building that has prospects comfortably moving forward. 
you can measure brand awareness, and I don't understand, you can't measure brand awareness, excuse me, and I don't understand why brand awareness is enough for these CMOs and many others. Sales and marketing professionals need to think of results such as the ones you think you see on the screen right here. I'm going to just give you some examples. Results like 400% ROI for an international consulting firm, 300,000 additional yearly revenue for marketing firms, 30% more webinar registrants for a car dealer software company, and more marketing qualified leads and opportunities for a tech communications company than all other initiatives combined. Now these uh, results are something that you can realize once you harness the power of LinkedIn. The ability to target key decision makers, build a relationship, and leverage those relationships to transition these prospects through each stage of the buying cycle. To leverage this power, you're going to need a strategy like this uh, image on the screen. Strategy is the biggest difference between an organization that just gets connections and one that consistently drives revenues. And with that strategy, you kind of just have a tactics approach and you can't optimize the tactics for revenue objectives. That's why strategy is at the heart of every action you need to take on LinkedIn. You need a strategy for your presence and how you're going to position yourself. You need a content strategy and how you're going to position yourself as a thought leader with your content and drive demand a messaging and message testing strategy so that prospects actually listen and respond to your messaging, a prospecting and community building strategy so you make the right connections and continually educate these potential buyers, a lead nurturing strategy where you now build and leverage your relationships, and a lead generation strategy where you integrate other sales and marketing initiatives for even greater results. Now let me show you what I mean by a strategic approach. To effectively engage with B2B buyers and have them wanting to accept your invitation to connect, your in-mail, or even the opportunity to speak further, your profile needs to demonstrate that you understand your prospect's specific business issues. And you need to help them think differently about how to solve their problems. For the CEO of Wizard Media, a Facebook marketing and SEO company, we shared stories about how she helps her clients. For example, on her profile, you see how the CEO built a Neiman Marcus Jewelry Designers Facebook community to 45,000 members in nine months, which is something retailers would find very interesting. She discusses the, make, the mistakes that this retailer made, why she had challenges, and the strategies that her firm took to take that client from 600 fans to 45,000 fans, zero engagement to capturing 37% of her fans' information, and from zero sales to $12,000 in sales in three days. Because her profile has content that resonates with her targeted audience, her targeted audiences are accepting her LinkedIn connection, they're joining her LinkedIn community and group where she's offering even more content, but more importantly, they're reaching out to her. After we uh, redid her profile, it attracted a prospect that was ready, willing, and able to spend $36,000, excuse me, per year on her services. And you see there was a strategy behind her profile. It was designed to specifically create the beginnings of a sales opportunity. Now, 88% of technology buyers said that thought leadership content was critical in determining a short list of vendors. And I'm sure if LinkedIn did this study for other industries and other verticals, they'd find very similar results. However, we find that most business owners and sales and marketing leaders are not using thought leadership content. They're curating content, which only puts them as a resource, or they're writing about the same topics that are already out there. So if you read the content from other social media experts, you'll find the same profile optimizing tips, the same LinkedIn mistakes, the same information written uh, just a little differently from a different author, different perspective. Now if you look at my content, you notice that I challenge the status quo. I challenge what other experts are saying, thinking, and doing. My articles on how social media experts are getting LinkedIn wrong had over 2,500 views within a matter of days, but more importantly, it helped us get more webinar re registrants for this particular webinar. I even had a number of prospects reach out to me prior to the webinar to see how I could help them and speak with them further. So most importantly, we gained clients. Having the 2,500 plus views is nice, but it's the next step actions that would really count and what really matters. What also counts is the revenue that they're generating from it. Again, I have a strategy behind the content I'm posting and how I'm gonna use it to drive demand. So you have to think about how your content will move prospects before you even create it. Now if you take a look at my other LinkedIn publishing platform posts that you see that I'll challenge Forrester on their thinking of LinkedIn, show how CMOs are getting LinkedIn wrong, I talked about that a bit earlier, and I share how B2B buyers are calling for a change and how do you sell and market to them on LinkedIn. So I'm taking a challenger stance. I'm pro 
provocative and I'm a little, uh, I guess some people might call it confrontational, but it's not the same information. It's driving demand. In fact, my post on how most sales and marketing leaders' LinkedIn profiles are worthless as sales and marketing tools doubled our monthly project, project volume. So by taking this challenger approach and not doing the same old, same old, I'm getting people thinking and talking. And by talking about the changes in the digital advertising industry, my client not only gained 3,000 plus views on a LinkedIn publishing platform within a couple of days, but because we planned on using this content to nurture prospects, it drove sales conversations at those digital marketing and advertising companies because those leaders wanted to know what the changes meant for their organization and how they should prepare. And this particular post got over 3,000 views for someone who didn't really have a presence on LinkedIn prior to working with us. So not only did this article gain maximum exposure on LinkedIn, but we used it for, uh, as a reason for decision makers to accept our client's connection, because so, we discussed the post and the invite to connect. We used the post as part of the lead nurturing program. And in our messages to digital advertising decision makers, we made mention of the changes that are happening in the industry and how it would affect or could affect their organization. We linked to the article so they could learn more, and we then invited the, these decision makers to phone conversations where they can network and discuss ways to adjust and take advantage of the forthcoming changes. So what you see there was a path to revenue that was created, and it started with this post. We didn't just post and push out any blog content for our client. There's a strategy behind the content they're using and we're using on LinkedIn. Another client of ours, Messages That Matter, created a state of the industry report that showed the position and messaging weaknesses marketing le market leaders had. And he did this for a number of different tech industries, including CRM, CPM, BPM, and BI. Because he was pinpointing the weaknesses and mistakes and challenging the status quo, he drove demand for his LinkedIn community, where he shares new ways to communicate so markets listen and respond, and he created more sales conversations. Lisa Shepard from the Mezzanine Group also recently published a Challenger article on the LinkedIn publishing platform. She showed her prospects that a lack of sales hunters is not the problem, even though it's a very common complaint that she hears from her mid-market B2B organizations. She shows that it's a symptom of a buyer revo buyer's revolution that is upending the buying and selling processes. So she, uh, she's unteaching her audience the sales approach that they're using, or they're used to using, and explaining why it's not generating sales. She's challenging organizations on why they're not changing their selling approach when buying has changed. Lisa's post, as shown on the screen, gained more than 1,000 views, 64 likes, and 19 comments. And this was her first LinkedIn publishing platform post. And she did not have much of a presence on LinkedIn before. But now she's creating real influence. She's getting organizations to think, rethink their budget allocation between sales and marketing. Lisa's content is providing a mental disruption that is reliably resetting the customer's choice of purchase criteria decisively in her favor. So instead of focusing on more sales training to try to turn their sales execs into sales hunters, they're putting their budgets into marketing. Most messaging that sales and marketing are using is commodity messaging. A client of ours, which is a sales data integration and management technology company, focused on how they can get 20% more leads. But their competitors were saying the very same thing. So everyone was, all their prospects had already heard it. So sales and marketing VPs were ignoring this type of messaging. Our client failed to make the right connection, but by changing their messaging, VPs of sales at Cisco, HP, Dell, Staples, and Fortune 500 companies were now joining their group and engaging in sales conversations. You can't just push out, push out messaging. You need to, a process to test, measure, and optimize the messaging you use, and you need to customize it for specific audiences. Like most sales and marketing leaders, they're just pushing out content for reach. They're just going for reach and connections they make, the messages they send, even social media experts like Jay Bayer mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it should be a volume play. But when you have a complicated sales process and a solution that requires a nice investment, you need to be targeted and focus on long-term sustainable revenue. In many cases, this requires an account-based marketing approach. And as you can see on the screen, recent studies show that account-based marketing can bring the highest ROI. So I just want to take a brief look on how we use the account-based marketing approach for messages that matter, some of the I talked to with, talked about earlier. We targeted specific companies with um, challenger content. We discussed a recent Forrester report that showed these tech companies are unable to make the value connection with their positioning. And we educated the marketers on how their positioning was affecting their program 
um, including all types of marketing, webinar, white paper, and content marketing. And we educated marketers and C-level execs on how their positioning was affecting sales, because a lot of people didn't realize that was an issue. We then coach marketers on a new approach through the articles that we're providing, a sneak peek to the approach. And then we proved to marketers that the, our client messages that matter approach worked with case studies. So there was a whole strategy in place. We focused on specific companies with specific issues, and we didn't just challenge marketers on their positioning approach. We didn't just educate them. We did the whole package. And we showed the prospects the pathway to change, and most importantly, gave them the urgency to do it now. And you, you need a strategy for your LinkedIn community and how you're going to make it dynamic. Because of one of our <clears throat> because one of our clients, a UK SaaS company or software as a service, was able to show potential partners that they had following, including more than 1,200 enterprise IT leaders in their LinkedIn group, and how they're actively engaging and demonstrating a need, our client was able to acquire partners like ServiceNow and IBM. And if you take a look at my community, I'm doing something on a smaller scale. I have more than 600 sales and marketing leaders engaging on how to be look, using more uh, LinkedIn more effectively. And you can see some of the people that are in my group on the screen. Now lastly, you need a strategy for nurturing prospects with upfront value, B2B buyers are calling for a change in how you market and sell to them. The number one re reason that B2B buyers do not connect with vendor on LinkedIn and social media in general is because they don't want to receive marketing materials. They want upfront value and a, value, a relationship based on value. So we still need to use gated content, we just need to n a change in how we're using it. And gated content is still an effective way to potentially buy, um, get buyers into the funnel. But if we lead with it, we're not going to get people to um, give us their contact information. So B2B buyers don't want to waste time with marketing materials before they're ready. They don't want to waste time on a networking or demo call if they haven't seen upfront value. So as soon as the connection is made, most sales and professionals think that the prospects are ready um, to be sold to, and they're ready for a sales conversation. That's one of the biggest mistakes. But with our invites to connect, we discuss the content that we can provide them, how it's relevant to their business. And uh, once they accept our call, then we invite our, our connection, then we invite them to join our group or share more content with them. And we point out ways that we can uh, work with them or help them improve their LinkedIn approach or profile. And because we're showing upfront value before we ask for a sales conversation, we're getting five to 10 additional networking calls per week. And you'll notice that B2B buyers will respond, they'll opt in for information, and it'll take time for a networking or sales conversation, but only after you've earned the right to get their contact information or earn their time for a sales call. And because we're taking a value upfront approach, and here are some of the clients, um, companies that our clients are engaging with, you can take a look at that uh, when you get a chance. Now to help you further, I know I'm running out of time, I'd love to work with you on going beyond brand awareness using LinkedIn. I encourage people to sign up for my free LinkedIn strategy session on the link below. And we'll review your profile and actions you're taking on LinkedIn and pinpoint what you need to be doing instead of uh, what you're doing right now, since most of you mentioned that you're not driving regular leads via LinkedIn. Thanks, Christina. I'm sure our attendees have a much stronger idea of how to drive revenue through LinkedIn, but you didn't answer every question. I've got several good questions from our audience teed up for you. And I'd like to remind our audience it's not too late to ask your own question by typing it into the questions box in your GoToWebinar controls. But before we get to your questions, I'd like to remind you about my video course on content marketing. The internet has now reduced distribution costs to nearly zero, so content marketing is within the reach of even the most budget challenged companies. All you need to do is understand how to identify your audience, learn their content needs, and meet them, which is actually what this course on content marketing will do for you. Learn how to reach your audience with quality content that won't break the bank. Go to courses.mikemoran.com for more info and to try the first unit out for free. We're about to start firing questions at Christina, but we need to thank our sponsors once again. Barn Razor is a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Corp, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. GetLinkedInHelp.com, a LinkedIn marketing firm that understands that social media reach without engagement that leads to revenue means nothing. Mountaintop Data, a B2B marketing intelligence company providing marketing lists as well as data cleaning, data pending, and data maintenance services. Now on to your questions. 
Our first question, Christina, is in order to follow this process you're describing to us, do we actually need our sales teams to be the ones engaging with buyers instead of marketers? And how do we do that? Actually, I think sales and marketing both need to be involved. Everyone needs to be on the same board, on the same page. I've noticed when I work with some companies, I feel or I've heard that sales is doing one thing, marketing is doing another, especially on LinkedIn and other platforms. They just need to um, have that. The strategy applies to everyone, and they need to be working together. So marketing will get the, the people ready like they're supposed to or the prospects ready, and then sales will take over from there. Um, so. This is not just for sales, it's not just for marketers, it's, it's a group effort. Terrific. Um, I've got a couple of questions that are about really how LinkedIn works. One of them is, who sees the posts made on your profile page, and do shares only go to followers? Okay, so when you post, I'm assuming they're talking about the publishing platform, so let's talk, since I talked about that. Um, when you share a, or print, post something to the publishing platform, it does come up in your connections news feeds, but as you know, there's so many different posts coming across, so it might get skipped over. It also comes down in the drop bar. You'll see, um, uh, you know, it'll say Mike Moran published X Y Z on the publishing platform. But you know, because there's so much happening, it might sometimes get lost. That's why we drive uh, conversations to it in the form of discussions within other groups, so that people do see it. And when you do if this person was talking about status updates, the same thing with status updates. Those kind of get lost. Um, your followers will see it, and people that are second connections to you will see it. But again, that's something that's going to get lost. So that's why if you want people to actually read it, you have to try to drive demand to it and bring it up in several ways instead of just posting it out there and hoping people will come across it. Terrific. Um, one, one person's asking um, if you can describe what you see the impact of Microsoft's acquisition of LinkedIn to be? As of right now, I don't see anything. Um, that's why I really haven't written on it. I know another, a lot of other people in my field have commented on it. I haven't seen anything coming down the pipeline. If anything, I think it will improve the platform because there have been some changes that I know I myself have had issues with and other clients of mine have issues with. But for the foreseeable future, the only thing I could think about is they're going to try to give Salesforce a run for their money. Terrific. And uh, you mentioned buyer engagement as being the thing we're really going for. How do you measure buyer engagement? Well, measuring it, um, again, is going beyond the, li uh, the clicks, the likes, the comments, the shares. You actually have to see who's taking those next steps actions. So if you post an article and the call to action at the end is to sign up for a webinar or to download a white paper, you can see if it's actually generating from your, your post and see if people are actually taking those next steps actions. So we have to go beyond that initial like because that doesn't necessarily mean anything and it doesn't, to me, a, clicking a like is not engaging. Downloading a white paper, signing up for a conversation or a strategy call with me or emailing me via LinkedIn or you know, regular email, that's what I would call engagement. Terrific. Um, you, you mentioned that uh, we need to do some testing of things like we do on websites. Are there any automated A-B testing platforms for LinkedIn like there are for websites? Um, there are. I'm not familiar with them because I don't use them. I do it all manually because um, I noticed that you can't customize and personalize as much, and on LinkedIn that's really key, especially when you're wanting to build relationships with people. If people see that you're giving them these marketing automation type things, and they kind of tune you out. I know that I tune it out. Um, so not sure exactly which ones they would be, but everything that we do when it comes to message testing is all manual. Okay, thanks so much, Christina. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for these great ideas, and thanks especially to our audience for your participation and your questions. If any of you had questions that we did not have time to answer, you can email your questions to Eileen at MikeMoran.com, and she'll be sure to get them to Christina for an answer. Later this week, we'll send you all a link to the recording of the webinar to listen to again and to share with others. We also invite you to mark your calendars for our next Biznology webinar, Outside in Marketing, a Pragmatic Approach to Content Marketing with James Mathewson, scheduled for 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on November 29th. We hope to see everyone back here then. Bye, everyone.